It's a marvelous Monday, which means another blind ranking is afoot and possibly a resolution to the Edmonton offer sheets. We'll get into all of that more on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket. From YouTube and YouTube TV, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Pretty solid, actually. Nice three uh, three days, uh, three weeks worth of football down south to uh, anyone who's looking to get themselves some Sunday ticket. So not bad. Use five bucks on FanDuel. Get yourself three-week trial of Sunday ticket, courtesy of our friends at FanDuel. Uh, what's going on, Dave? How are you feeling on a Monday? Feeling pretty good. That's uh, you know, getting that much closer. That much closer to a little bit closer. We are getting closer, indeed, by the day. That's how. That's how time works. That's how it all works, buddy. Get getting closer, getting closer to the team players on the ice. That's kind of where I was going to go with that. Yes. Um. Before we get into any of that, uh, I don't know if you're if you just saw, but we just got I don't know, a lot of full cup breaking news. But I just saw a little blurb. Uh, David Alter was writing about this on the Hockey News. Wrote about how the NHL and and Fanatics and the Maple Leafs have announced a new merch deal. I don't know if you you've seen this, and this might be something that would I would imagine peak pique your interest being a, a wrestling fan but it looks like the maple leafs have new wwe inspired belt merch is this something that you are in on or out on mr morisuti well yeah this literally literally dropped and i was like okay was like you know title belts have become like now that i have a belt it's it may it makes me think about what else i could add to the collection um, we got a photo of it that we can throw up for those watching do I have a photo of myself with it? Oh no, no, no! Of of the WWE belt. Oh yes, I'm actually like the least one right now because all David Alter just tweeted that out, and it's. I'm gonna pull up. Yeah, I'll just pull up from his article here. Um, they, these and these are kind of belts that have been, you know, coming up through the grapevine with um, here. Get rid of the ad. So, like, this is the belt right here for those that are watching on YouTube. WWE has been kind of doing this with all the sports teams. Uh, though you may have seen maybe at the end of the Stanley Cup playoffs, they had a Stanley Cup commemorative belt. I think yeah. it had like Panthers side plates, but it was a Stanley Cup in the middle. So, like, that's where I knew that. Th- and I knew that this was something that was going to be coming where they're going to do team ones because they have NFL teams. All have their own belts. MLB teams have their own belts. I think college teams, like if you, like it's been going around all off season where like players, like Kevin Durant got a Texas Longhorn belt. Stephen A. Smith got a New York Knicks belt. So I'm just gonna go through, cycle through the pictures here. It's like it's a pretty, it you know, it obviously looks quite generic. There's a nice little long shot of it all, like. In terms of it's got a pretty, I guess, a uniform design, but yeah, I don't know how I feel about the, like the circle in the middle, like the the shape of the belt. Oh uh, yeah, so, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't mind. Would it would have been? Cool. I'd have I'm to definitely... see it in person to oh, get it's a better. It's almost like the like the intercontinental belt in a way. Like that's kind of how it's shaped yeah. at this point. Whereas we all know, like the world heavyweight championship belt is that's the one that everybody likes the shape of. They should have made it yeah. like that. But I guess that's, that maybe is, is what the Stanley cup belt should be moving forward is, is the world championship. And then the teams, and eh, they get their little, you know, tag team belt kind of shape to it. Um, but yeah, if you want one of these, you can get one for the very low price of $886 plus tax. Yeah. What does that come to? 
Let me let me let me quickly do some calculating. Eight hundred and eighty-six dollars plus uh add your thirteen percent sales tax. You're gonna have one thousand one dollar and eighteen cents. Thousand bucks, thousand dollars for this, uh for this uh <laughs> this belt. I could tell you based on the price, I'm definitely out on it. Uh, uh, is, yeah, so I was going to say, <laughs> is there like, is there real golds in these? Like, are they are they gold plated? Are there real rubies or or diamonds in these things? Like, why the hell is this a thousand dollars? The real uh, WWE belts aren't even that much. Yeah, I was going to say. So back in the day. Like when they first brought the concept belts, like you, you live in Niagara, you live oh, in Niagara, yeah. you know what the WWE shop over there. You could go and get yourself a belt, but it was like six hundred bucks, I think, at the time. Yeah, like between four and six, I would say. That's kind. Of, I remember I was begging my parents to get me one. My parents are Italian; they don't do that. No, that was never no. going to happen. I got. Really. They, had, they also sold like this little mini Niagara Falls yeah. belt for kids. It looked like the WWE, but it had Niagara Falls across it. Oh, cool. I got that one for Christmas one year, but I didn't get the the actual no. replica belts. Uh, no, my mom had a good joke. A kid was want look at the million dollar. Remember the million dollar belt? Yeah. And the kid asked the guy, guy, "How much is the belt?" My mom was like, "It's a million dollars." <laughs> Such a mom joke, but yeah. My, like the belt that I have, I didn't buy it. It was a gift for my birthday. But I know those things run like a two, three hundred bucks. I would say, yeah, like like eight hundred dollars. That's that's robbery. I, I I asked a buddy of mine, buddy of ours actually, that when we were at the WD event, they had Jay's ones, the Blue Jays belt. Okay, that was like seven hundred bucks. So why so, would this be more? Like because it's the Leafs. Yeah, already, still. Oh, it's it, like I. If somebody actually buys this, in my opinion, that's a bit like that's a like you must be like a fan with money to blow, in my opinion, because there's already a Leafs belt out there, guys. Let's not forget, there is a Leafs design belt out there. The Edge, Edge belt, worn it. I actually got to see the original one, the guy that made the original one. But it's not out there for purchase. You can get it made. You could make your own, probably. Realistically, there's, there's a company I mean, there's... that there's the company that makes the that made the belt that can just make more of them. Like they just, it's a it's a very niche thing, right? You like, know, there's licensing belt. issues, I think, when it yeah. comes to selling it on a mass this sale. Though, an and, official and... WWE license belt, and that's why it's costing so much. Yeah, it's officially WWE license and officially NHL license. And and to be fair, Fanatics has to pay for those licensing fees, which is why the price is is, is so high. But they also would have to pay for those fees for the WWE and, and the MLB for the Jays belt. So why this would be more than the Jays belt, I do not know. Ultimately, uh, it, it should cost the same. But who knows? Uh, but yeah, if you do want to purchase one, it is available for a low, low price of $886 plus tax coming up to a whopping $1,118 uh, or sorry, $1,001.18 rather. I would like to see one in person, I will say, but I will never buy one. It doesn't look like anything that would ever, ever interest me in buying one, even if it was two, three hundred bucks. I probably still wouldn't buy one, to be honest. No, like if I'm going to spend that amount of money, I'm going to go with one that means a little more, like the John Cena spinner WWE belt. That's yeah, one something, always... maybe something like that. Or maybe, you know, buy a ticket to a game. Probably would rather buy a ticket to a game. Can you buy a ticket to the game for two, three hundred dollars? Yeah, you can get some bleeders. I know. For two, you can. You bucks. can. I'm not. Yeah, you can get when, it when, when when the Yotes roll through or, you know, San Jose <laughs> roll through <laughs> one of those crappy teams and wants to say you could get snacks and tickets over on uh, over on, uh, you know, any what's the uh, site that we use for ticket and it's time. escaping me right now. Game, Game time. time. There it is. The Game time app. You could definitely get tickets. For under 300 bucks. Wow, what a blunder. All right, let's take a break. Let's come back. Let's get into Maple Leafs blind ranking. Today, you're doing the ranking, and you'll be blind ranking seven defensemen, Dave. So get ready. It's coming up on the side. Plus, the Oilers, they got to make a decision on their offer sheet situation. That will be coming, and there were some interesting moves over the weekend that maybe tells us what they're thinking about doing in the next 24 hours. We'll get into that also Coming up on the other side, I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Moore Studio. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. 
We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. So join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of the show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com. So just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Welcome back into the Locked On Lease podcast. Mike DiStefano, Dave Morsuti with you as always every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday through the rest of the month of August, which is quickly coming to an end. Let me tell you, we're at what, August 19th? Man, this month is just zooming by. Before you know it, it is going to be training camp, and then we go back to daily coverage of the Toronto Maple Leafs Monday through Friday. You can find the podcast on every podcast and platform. You can find us also up on youtube to watch the uh the video version and if you're enjoying what you're listening to we ask that you do subscribe leave a like on this uh, on this video and let us know down below are you in or are you out on those wwe leafs fanatics crossover branded merchandise are you buying the belt for a thousand bucks i'm out not at that price point i'd imagine most people who don't have fu money probably going to be out on that but we also ask that you take part in the blind rankings. These are fun. We've been doing them every Monday for the last few weeks here, uh, and we get people in the comments doing it alongside us. So if you want to as well, comment your blind rankings down below uh, as we go through them. So this week we're going to be doing defensemen. So I've got seven defensemen, all of which who have played at least 10 games in a Maple Leafs uniform and have played in the last 25 years. So they've played in the 2000s. Uh, century i guess or millennia whatever you want to call it uh and dave has to without knowing who the seven players are blindly rank them from best to worst maple leaf so dave you ready to go let's go all right let me give you your first one and your first one very topical very newsworthy based off of what happened over the weekend your first one is cody cc cody cc Cody CC. I'll put him at number six. Number six. Okay. We'll put him at number six of seven. Favorite Cody CC moment of mm -hmm. all time. Him taking a slap shot, missing the net, hitting the referee. That's my Cody CC favorite moment when he was with the Leafs. There you go. Not bad. So that's the Cody CC memory that Dave will always, always have and always cherish. Now uh, a San Jose Shark. No longer an Edmonton Oiler. He's been traded to the San Jose Sharks uh, to open up some cap space. We'll we'll talk about that a little bit uh, after we do the blind ranking. Might be a little tease to what the Oilers could be doing with their offer sheets, opening up some space. But uh, moving along here in the blind rankings, the next player that you get to blindly rank here is going to be Stu Percy. Stuart oh. Percy, former first-round pick. Stu Percy. Oh, I'll go number seven. Number seven for Stu Percy. So you yeah. are of the belief I, I really... that every player I have on this list has to now be better than Cody CC and Stuart Percy. What's your Stuart okay, Percy me... memory? Pardon? Stuart What's Percy Stuart memory. Percy? Well, yeah. actually, funny enough, his name came about this weekend. There was a person who put out like worst um like draft bus yeah and somebody put in this ranking Stuart percy and i think it was leafs updates on twitter kind of put up i think i would give that one to tyler biggs and i said like how anybody could think anyone other than tyler biggs as like the biggest leaf draft blunder yeah memory like i don't know how that like at least percy played nhl games for the leafs he didn't True. play many, but at least he did play. Yeah, and 
if I recall, they didn't give up multiple draft picks to move up and take Stuart Percy. They had to move up a bit, but they didn't give up. Like, we all know the trade. Like, it turned out to be Ricard Raquel and John and uh, was John Gibson. Yeah. 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 Ricard Raquel and John Gibson, essentially, for, for top picks. What that trade turned out to be. If you, if you go Attaboy back and look at the trade tree. So, Attaboy yeah, Stuart Percy, maybe, you know, it was a bad pick. But it didn't damage uh, you as badly, or it doesn't doesn't have the you know the this the bitter taste in your mouth that Tyler Biggs gave you. Anyway, moving on in our blind rankings, you've got CC at six, you've got Steve Percy at seven. So every single player here now has to be better than Cody CC, or man, your ranking is going to look terrible. All right, next player for you. I'll give you a nice one. Let's give you Captain Dion Phaneuf, the captain. You know what? He'd have been the 24th captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs. He was the 24th captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, you know what? Leafs. Some people might hate this, but because of the way this is going, I'll go number two. Number for two for Dion Phaneuf. All right. All right. All right. All right. Dion Phaneuf. Yeah. I mean, the problem with Dion is like he was the captain of his team through. Like one of the so, worst eras. He had Maple nothing Leafs. to work. He, look at his defensive partners, guys. Carl Gunnarsson was his long term, like one of his long term defensive partners. Remember Mike Koska? I think at yeah. one point was also his Koska. defensive partner. Like, yeah. I, 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 in a way, I like the trade I got. I understood why they made that deal, but he just hadn't. They, again, it was like this Phil Kessel trade. You bring the guy in and like. The guy on paper looks nice, but then the everything around it is absolute garbage. Yeah, that was the least in the late that was, that, was, that was a tough, like yeah, like early 2010s, just tough, tough years for the Maple Leafs. Um, only one playoff appearance, and that was the lockout shortened season. It was 4-1, 2013. The only time Dion Phaneuf played playoff games for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, all right, next up, let's give you. Oh, this is so mean of me to to give you on this on this occasion, but I'm gonna give you uh, I'm gonna give you Frankie Corrado, my guy, Frank Corrado, free Frankie. Again, another guy I feel so bad for because, like, if you I, I don't know if you've listened to his interview on the Steve Dangle podcast um, lately, and just very unfortunate what Mike Babcock did to him in Toronto. Trust um, me, I'm, I'm well aware. I've I've heard from the horse's mouth himself a lot I, of that. I, the behind yeah. the and we we talked about a little bit on the podcast here. We've had him on the show a couple of times. He's talked about it. Yeah, I'll put him at number. I'll put him at number five. I feel bad for doing that, but Frankie will understand. I'm gonna clip him and send him this and tell him that you're a hey, hate more. Can you tell him I put him higher up than Stu Percy and Cody CC though? He might appreciate that. I mean, yes. He probably wish he made Cody. He got Cody Cece's bag. It's Cody Cece, I didn't realize he's, he's making over three million a year. Like I can't believe oh, Edmonton yeah. paid that guy three. Yeah, I did. I, I yeah. Oh. They have yeah. a hard. They have a hard on for former Leafs. Like come on, crazy, crazy. Should have signed only, Frankie. Well, yeah, only one has worked out for them so far. By the way, so they're not batting a great average right now. Yeah, uh, Connor Brown's doing okay. He did okay, but anyway. Next up on our list of Maple Leafs blind ranking defenseman edition. He's got Dion at two, Frankie at five, Cody Cece at six, Stu Percy at seven, which means you've got slots one, three, and four available. I'm going to give you Thomas Caberlet. I'm going number one. Caber at number one. Thomas Caberlet at numero uno. And you better hope I don't have like Brian Leach on this list or something. Uh, Leach wouldn't. I, I, I mean, as Leafs defenseman, I put Cabrillo over a lot of players. I guess, yeah, in the Leafs uniform, yeah, he probably was the best defenseman that they've had since like in the last 25 years in a Leafs I, uniform specifically. I will say, thankfully, he did get his Stanley Cup when, with wow. Boston. Yeah, with I would. I mean, it hurt me when I see saw him win it in Boston, but 
was also I was a big Cabrillet fan. I was a guy every Leafs game yelling at Cabrillet to shoot the puck because he never wanted to shoot. shoot. Yeah, that was uh, that was that was McCabe's job. Brian McCabe ripped it the was, puck. But was no one. Job. But but when Cabrillet shot ripped that puck, it was a beautiful sight. It's because a lot of people didn't expect it to happen. All right, next up on our list, we're gonna give you a defenseman that is still with the team but not on the ice. Mike Van Ryan. Mike Van Ryan. Yeah, buddy. Uh, I'm going number. I'll, I'll. I can go number four for Mike Van Ryan. Mike Van Ryan at number four. Oh man, I, you're gonna hate yourself so much. I mean, if if I'm gonna have such a scrub at number three, probably, and I don't care, but like, um. My favorite Mike Van Ryan moment, unfortunately not great for Van Ryan, was when he got put through the glass by Milan Lucic. Yes, that is definitely the the number one Mike Van Ryan moment that everybody remembers. Or even when he got here too, like people were pretty stoked. It's like, oh, guy's gonna hit like a truck. He's gonna be a great defensive defenseman, and yeah, it was okay. He didn't play that much actually. He, did not. he got hurt and didn't really. Play I think that was his lot. last season in the NHL. Is what the least, if I'm not mistaken. Possibly, and then he ended up going into coaching, and now he's back on the bench. Man, uh, once won a Stanley Cup together, so they're hoping to do the same thing here in Toronto again. Which means at number three, buddy, 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 you have Jeff Finger. Uh, what well, I knew you were gonna bring in Jeff Finger into all of this. Well, and... if you knew, how well, could you possibly let him get all the way to last and keep number three open? Yeah, you got Jeff Finger ahead of Mike Van Ryan, ahead of Frankie, ahead of Cody C D, ahead of well, maybe he is ahead of Stu Percy. But Jeff Finger is the third best defenseman. That's your ranking. So you've got Thomas Caberle at number one, Dion Phaneuf at number two, Jeff Finger at number three, Mike Van Ryan at number four, Frankie Corrado at number five, Cody Cece at number six, and Stu Percy at number seven. I will say, honestly, to to, to be honest, you're probably not that far off like i don't think so swap, sadly if you swap like Cody Cody Cece Cece. <laughs> and, and jeff finger you might actually be it's right. probably as good a perfect ranking yeah yeah if you just swap those so when you put cc at six right away i'm like he's definitely higher than six that's how bad this list is. Uh, and it just kind of shows how bad <laughs> the least blue yeah. line has been. Yeah, like, Cody DC is is well. I mean, I just took random defensemen, like literally so random guys. Um, that yeah, th- but it goes to show that CC is better than a lot of dudes that have played for the Maple Leafs uh, over the course of the last twenty five years. Um, but remember that Jeff Finger deal where it's like, who? Jeff Finger? They paid him four years, four million. What? It's like no, no, like that's per season. What? They gave Jeff Finger a four-year deal. Yeah, yeah, they did. It was a four-year deal worth three and a half million per season. Yeah, pretty sure that was a Cliff Fletcher special, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, either Cliff or maybe that was was that year one of Truculence? No, it was Commissaric. No. Big Commissaric, big money. Oh, I remember that. Oh, yeah, that was also a big money deal. <laughs> it's funny because I think. Like that was like they also brought in Cujo. I, I'm pretty sure it was a Cliff Fletcher. Um, because I think Cujo was brought in that same time as well. I can't Oops. remember. Wasn't Cujo traded back to Toronto? No, he was a, he he signed like there he signed as like a free like a one year free agent deal. And I think oh, okay. Hag, I think Hagman too was like that as well. And then, you know, I then not too. I think I think Burke came into just not long after that. Yeah, like halfway through that season, because I don't think he came in. I think he came in during the year. Then he started doing Burkey stuff, Burkey things. Started gutting the team and reshaping it, getting some truculence, truculence in the in the roster. All right, so there's the blind ranking, defenseman edition. How did you guys do? Let us know down below if you were following how your rank turned out, or let us know on Twitter, or X as it's now called, at Mickey underscore Canuck, at D underscore Morisuda. You can let us know your blind ranking there as well. All right, coming up on the other side, speaking of Cody Cece, 
Cody Cece, no longer an Edmonton Oiler. He's been dealt to the San Jose Sharks. Edmonton, looks like they're making some cap room. Will they be making or matching these offer sheets? We'll talk about that on the other side. It's Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. You're listening to the Locked On Lease Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether it's speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because of eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. Uh, Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti with you and uh, the Edmonton Oilers have a pretty big decision to make in the next 24 hours. Last Tuesday, they were offer sheeted not once but twice by the same team, by the St. Louis Blues. Uh, so Dougie rare. Armstrong, oh, Dougie Armstrong, balls of steel, really testing Stan Bowman early on in his gig. Which, which I don't know if we talked about this, but I was talking about this uh, the other day when I was on 1050. Do you think that the Oilers or do you think that the Blues would have done this if? Like they didn't sign Stan Bowman. Like, is this like a slap in the face? Like, hey, I don't respect you, Stan Bowman. So therefore, I'm gonna make these offer signings. Like, if they didn't, if they didn't, you know, if Stan Bowman wasn't the GM and it was still Ken Holland or it was still Jeff Jackson, do you think St. Louis still goes after these guys? Uh, no, I still think he does it because the Oilers cap situation is a, a mess. Yeah, like, but that's the situation with it. every team every year, and no one ever offers sheets people to screw them cap wise ever. I I I I don't know if they, I don't know if I I still think if it was Jeff Jackson he would consider it too. I I maybe there is a little bit of that with Stan Bowman. I don't maybe I don't I personally don't think so. I just think that St. Louis has been wanting to acquire young players. These are two players that were viewed as like prime off sheet candidates. So. Might as well go after. You think it's just a coincidence? I think so, but I'm also yeah. I'm also the agreement with you that if GM like if a GM like Blue, of Armstrong is going to do this, why aren't we seeing this more often with a lot of other players and a lot of other teams that have? Those Every in- year, yeah. there is strong offer sheet candidates that other GMs put other teams bond. Like this forced Edmonton to make a couple of moves, like. You know, because they've now got a couple offer sheets out there to Broberg and Dylan Holloway, it forced them to have to make some some moves. They had to trade Cody CC, uh, and that include a third round pick to 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 for San Jose to take on that cap space. Uh, and then they they also made a move where they traded for Vasily Podkolzin yesterday, technically acquiring cap space, but he's he's not making a lot of money uh, for a fourth round pick. So I wonder if that if that tells us something. Like, th- does that maybe tell you that okay, we're gonna keep Broberg and and maybe let Holloway walk, which is interesting because I kind of figured it'd be the opposite when I originally saw Broberg. They have to match four point five eight million. Holloway's just two point two nine, uh, both for two years. Like, did, did those trades kind of signal maybe Pod Colson's the Holloway replacement and CC? You know, he's gone, but that's because Broberg's going to take his spot. Like, do, do you read into that at all? Well, I was reading, I think it was Mark Spector that wrote this, uh, or somebody wrote that, like, the Oil- Oilers were looking to get Broberg around the 1.8 million range or something like that. That's the and, near where they're at now. Yeah, like, like basically, the Blues, I like, will just up that by, t- like, t- 2.5 times of what you're asking. Like, we'll give you a bigger deal. So... It's a lot to pay for a defenseman that hasn't played a lot, right? We talk a little bit of like, like he's going to get paid more than Timothy Lilligren. Now, like at least Timothy Lilligren has played NHL games. I know Broberg's got the higher ceiling as like a top Dude, 10 he's, pick. He's getting paid more than Chris Tanev. Uh, yeah, that's also true. <laughs> like that 4.58 is, is not insignificant. 
no, for a guy who played the- most of the season last year, American Hockey League. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, so it, it's just it, it's just brutal how like it's brutal how that kind of works out for the Oilers. I mean, I'm not feeling sorry for the Oilers, but like the 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 Blues are just like we don't really care because we got cap space, right? Tory Krug is likely he might even not even play again from like are even released for the year. So yeah. they got that cap space, so you might as well go out and use it and you know, they're they're a team that's lo- looking to the kind of fast track yeah. a little bit of a retool. Yeah, I, I've I've got no problems with St. Louis doing this. I think uh, we talk every year that there's tons of teams who have cap space that have needs for young players that should totally be in the offer sheet game that just aren't for whatever reason. The the NHL GMs, I don't know if it's if they're all in cahoots where it's like you don't you know sign my guy, I won't sign your guy. So the one time we saw it happen in the last like you know ten years. It, it turned into a bit of a pissing match with the Carolina Hurricanes and the Montreal Canadiens, and Montreal ended up letting Kakaniemi walk uh, and took the compensation, and that turned out to be a very bad move for the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, you know, doesn't look like – I mean, we don't know what the Oilers are going to do. We'll find out in the next 24 hours. But based on the trades they made over the weekend, it, it appears that – you know, they, they're trying to create space to, to get Roberg signed. And maybe Pod Colson does replace that Dylan Holloway uh, player, another former first round pick, power forward, plays a similar style, a um, couple years older, a year or two older. But still, uh, it, it, maybe they do, they end up letting Holloway walk and sign Broberg. Um, that's the opposite way of what I would have done it because mm-hmm. again i don't think brobert's worth 4.58 million bucks um holloway i think you could stomach 2.29 but yeah unless Broberg really does take what he was doing in the playoffs and then goes to another level or keeps playing that way at least um you know there's big question marks to the that. other pro- the other problem is the oilers don't have a Broberg replacement they don't really have many their their prospect capital is like zilch, right? Well, they that's got... the other thing too. It's it's easier to manufacture a winger than it is, you know, a top four defenseman, which is what they're yeah. hoping Broberg turns into. So there's there's that decision to weigh as well. You're right. Yeah. So that's that's what I think is likely leaning to a decision to keep and like keep Broberg because even though at the high price, it, it also just means. I mean, Brober's putting himself in a position where he's really got to step up his game, right? Like, yeah, to do something like that, it's. I'm, I'm very curious of how, if he does stay in Edmonton, how that also factors into how. I mean, look, players are gonna like go get your money. If someone's offering you money, you go out and get it. But what it does to the team in terms of like now they had to make all these moves to, you know, make it all work. I'm very curious to see how that all plays out. Yeah, I don't know. I, Especially I if Holloway has that. to go because they don't have this. They just don't have the room to keep him. But you can't I mean, blame Broberg for position. that. You can't blame That's Broberg. I mean, if Holloway anything, it's like, well, it's like Jeff Jackson. You should have signed this guy if you want him at one point eight, and he was coming in. And he wanted like you know two and a half, three million. Well, maybe you should have done two and a half, yeah. three million, got the deal done, so that the offer sheet doesn't come in halfway through the summer at four point five eight. You know, so like you can blame the team too for just not getting these yeah. done and allowing them to linger, right? Like that's that's the threat of being an RFA, right? When you have offer sheet capabilities, you know, you have a little bit of leverage to hold out if you're a player. Give me a little bit more. Give me a little bit more, right? That's kind of the difference between the two. Um, and obviously, it worked out very well in both of these players' favor. They're going to get paid. Regardless if they're in Edmonton or if they're in in St. Louis, they're 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 getting paid this much money for the next two years through guaranteed contracts, whether Edmonton matches or not. You know, so you can never blame or fault a player for getting their money, getting their bag. I don't think teammates will look at it that way either. Uh, the only person who who you know should be upset with himself is, uh, I guess Jeff Jackson slash um, Stan Bowman for for not getting these deals done sooner and allowing the yeah. offer sheet to be open and available for uh, St. Louis, especially for Jeff Jackson, because it's not like, Oh, we never expected him to be off. sheet. like, it's kind of been discussed that it's a possibility. You always have to prepare for those things. Yeah. Well, it never happens though. 
that's the thing. Like it rarely it, happens. It, it rarely, yeah. it never happens. Like it really doesn't. Um, like, like uh, the Aho Kakanyemi was like the first time in such a long time that like, yeah. So we'll see what happens in the next 24 hours. We'll get our answer. The Oilers have, uh, have until, well, the offer sheet was made. What? Like, early I think they, they've morning. got like i think maybe until tomorrow until Tuesday. Yeah, like t- tomorrow morning i think is is when they'll have to make yeah. their decisions it's seven days from the offer sheet they offer they were offer sheeted tuesday morning so i don't know if it's like the end of tuesday or if it's you know by i think it's tuesday. probably until the end of business day tuesday like yeah 5 p.m so, tuesday or something but 5 p.m tuesday i do know i think the oilers are planning some sort of avail on monday like as we're recording this, I don't know when exactly, but like they're planning. Oh, then some... I imagine if, if there's an avail, then they'll announce their decisions at that point. Yeah, I think a decision is going to come before Tuesday. Am I like at this point, like these trades have kind of no, signified. They, they gotta know. To yeah, it. like right. And then they got to know at this point. It's been six days. Like they've figured out what they can and can't do. They've got one point nine million in cap space right now. Like they're just they, yeah. they, they, they don't have a whole lot to play with. You know, uh, Evander came. They could chuck him on LTIR. That's been discussed. That's that's five point one two five million, which would give them just enough to get both of these guys signed. I think maybe they chuck one other player down in the minors to have a bit of a, a lesser roster, like a twenty man roster. So it could be done, uh, but it gets tricky because Kane's not out for the season, just season opening LTIR. Um, so yeah, at some but point, he could come back midway. Good. That's what I mean. You're going to have to fit in an extra five million and figure out, all right, how are we going to do it? So, uh, and that won't be accruing any space. Also, I don't believe no. uh, by doing that if they got him on LTIR. So, uh, that's it's a tricky situation for sure that the Oilers have themselves in, and and we'll find out what their decision on this is coming up shortly. Uh, really quickly too, sounds like Yaroslav Askarov wants out of Nashville, does not want to report to the American Hockey League. Um, so a talented young goaltender who was a first round pick a couple of years back of the Preds ripped it up in the AHL last couple of years, played a little bit in the NHL this year, um, played fine uh, and is expected to be, you know, a, a young up and coming stud goaltender. And they just signed Pekka uh, or not Pekka Rene. That's that's long ago, brother, for me. Uh, they, <laughs> they just signed uh, UC Soros to a, a long-term deal in Nashville to be their number one long-term moving forward. So what does that mean for Nashville? What does that mean for Yaroslav Askarov? I guess he's, you know, looking at it and saying, I don't see a path for me to be a, a long-term starter here. So why not? If you're Askarov, yeah, put me somewhere else where I can, where I can flourish, where I can get games, where I can be a starter and, you know, get the bag ultimately. Yeah, I mean the right he writing was kind of on the wall with this not even with the sorrow steel, but they also brought in Scott Wedgwood mm-hmm. to be a backup. Like yeah. for, for them to basically say we're give, we're bringing in a, a, on a multi year deal, not like a one year deal. I mean, it kind of says they just were expecting Askarov to go to the AHL, which yeah. I mean they have every right to think that way, but Askarov also is probably like I I've I'm shown that I can I'm more than an AHL goalie. Well, you he as for development, you want him to play as many games as possible. So right. it often makes sense to have like your young goalie. He may be better than Wedgwood and a better backup option, but you want him to be playing as much games as possible. Yeah. So you put him in the AHL, let him season, and then usually you go from AHL starter to NHL starter, like right well, away, right after that. That's but, that's that's the real problem they have. He's not going from AHL starter to NHL starter. He's going from AHL exactly. starter to. Oh, I'm still a backup here. So. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> At least until his uh, waivers run out, which probably would be the last season that he's. I think this is the last year that he's waiver yeah. eligible. So, like, if you're Nashville, like, they probably should have dealt Askarov. If they were just deciding that Saros was, they're going to do that deal. Askarov should have been traded a little, like probably at the draft. Well, there was interest at the draft. There was interest, and, and they're asking. Leafs would have gone like, after. We were saying, why don't Leafs go after one of these guys? Yeah, that would have been ideal for the Maple Leafs to, to, to go after one of them. And and maybe now that there's a little bit less leverage for Nashville, um, maybe that they're, they're, the Leafs could enter those sweepstakes again. I don't know. Like, I don't really know what they have to offer, what it would take 
to get something done like that. Um, I, I still don't see Mitch Marner being involved in, in a deal for Askarov. I, I don't nope. think that's going to be the case. So what do they have? Like, they're probably not going to touch Easton Cowan, maybe a Fraser Minton, but do they, does Nashville want a Minton? I don't, they want I don't a, know if they do. Apparently, they want either a forward or defenseman. They don't want another goaltender. Well, the name now that's been floating out there is, uh, I guess, possibly see if they can get some sort of deal worked out between Columbus for Patrick Laine and get line a because they want a goal score they want goals oh i know i mean if you're columbus a <laughs> thousand percent i but the thing is nashville needs more cap space i think they're at three about three million in cap space so like i mean uh well, columbus would probably eat some salary to make that work a thousand percent oh yeah um eat some so, salary take a contract back you know you get an askrov i would do that and then you know they, they probably would get some more on top of it it wouldn't be a one for one i'm sure they would have to you know give you know pick prospect something else to go on top as well like it's a very talented goaltender it's going to be an expensive uh an expensive piece to get you're not going to you know get him for just patrick line at, at what line is at at this point especially since you know same thing line a wants wants out too so there's not a whole lot of leverage there but that's kind of the latest uh you know rolling spot both, uh, you know, both teams would, would work out well. All right. That'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morissuti. And follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. Uh, we'll be back with another episode for you guys on Wednesday. But until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.